Hello, I hope you guys are doing okay. So in this video, we are going to create a sticky nav bar in Angular. Sounds pretty simple, but this one is going to be a bit more interactive and it is going to have a lot of interesting behaviors like, for example, when you go down, it is going to hide itself beyond a certain scrolling point. And now when you go back up, it sort of reappears itself magically because the user might want to navigate to someplace else. And when it goes down, it hides again. And as a bonus, you can also just hover over this to make it appear at any time. So this is a good example of a scroll based animation where uh, your navbar is basically being animated based on the scroll position of the user. And you have seen it on a lot of different sites. This is a simple example of this, but we can also build more complex examples using similar techniques. So how do we create such an interactive navbar in Angular? Well, let's find out. There are multiple ways to do this in Angular and the first automatic you know sort of point would be to go towards the angular animations package for this but there are two things that prevent me from using that and the first one is that the animations package though nice is a bit more verbose than i would want the second thing is that the angular animations api does not have any built-in handling for detecting the scroll of the user uh, and using it for your own animations so because of these reasons uh, since long now my preference has been to use uh, motion one now motion one is a modern web animation library a very tiny library which is just you can see 3.8 kb one function and the scroll function is 2.5 kb so it is created by matt perry who is also the creator of framer motion now framer motion if you have not heard of it is a really popular animation package but it is meant to be used mostly for react and react um, developers really love it because it makes it so easy to add uh, animated experiences and interactive components to your applications but specifically going back to motion one, I'm going to be using two functions from motion one. And so the first one is animate. Now, if you go in the docs, you can see here, the first function is the animate function that we want to use to animate the navbar to a specific you know, position to hide and show it. And the second thing we want to use is to use the scroll function, which is going to link it up with the scroll position of the user. Okay. So with that, just let me give you a brief sort of overview of the project itself. It's a very simple project. I'm using Tailwind for the layout of this Angular project. And we have just one nav component, navbar component. I have encapsulated all of that code into the navigation HTML element here, as you can see. And it's in a component called app navbar. And if you go to your app component here, you can see that we are importing the navbar here. All right. And this navbar is going to contain all of our animations as well for the navbar so that it remains neatly sort of contained within it and then we have the main content is just some simple text and we have just maximized it and made it big so that we have more space to actually scroll down and so that we can test out the scroll in a better way all right and initially if i show you the code for the app navbar we have some menu items and all of that stuff but the main thing that we you need to notice is that we need we have given a fixed position here okay so you can give fixed because we want it to be on top of the screen all of the time. All right. So initially we just have a sticky nav bar here, which is in itself is quite nice, but we want to add the interactive behavior. So let's get started. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is to install motion one and uh, let's go to his, to his documentation and we can see that quick start says that it has NPM install motion here. Okay. So let's just use that NPM install motion. Great. It's installed. and now let's start working on the component. So this is the navbar component. And the first thing that we need to do is to actually add a state for the navbar being visible or not, because so that we can link it up with the animation. So let's create a signal here called navbar visible. And this is going to be a Boolean signal. And initially it is going to be true because we want to show the navbar initially. The second thing we need to do is to add a handler, a scroll handler and use the scroll function of motion. So now where do we use it? We want to use it as soon as the navbar is initialized. So we are going to do ng on in it. And within this, we, we are going to use the scroll of motion here so that it gets imported. And then within that, you can see that we get an object in the callback. Now in this callback, you get a lot of scroll related information which we can use. So what we are interested in currently is that we want the absolute position or the current sort of position of the scroll the y scroll position so let's get that and let's see position and we are going to do scroll info dot y and dot current this is going to contain our current scroll position now what we want is we want 
and the nav bar to hide when the scroll for example reaches a bit of position here so we are going to say that okay maybe it is about 300 pixels all right or let's say 350 pixels maybe okay so let's make this 350 so if the position is greater than 350 we want the nav bar to hide so we're going to change the signal here nav bar visible dot set to false all right and and in else we are going to do this dot nav bar visible dot set is true so that when it goes back up it shows itself up again all right so very simple now let's just see whether this scroll handler works and let's just log the visible state here and we are going to create an effect which is perfect for these use cases let's create a console.log and we are going to log the navbar visible here okay so let's test this out now you can see our navbar shows here fine and let's go in our console here and you can see initially it is true but when we scroll down here you can see that at this level it turns to false okay Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to make it a big more. So let's make it 500 so that it hides a bit lower down when the user is actually quite down and it's clear that the user is reading the information and is not really interested in the uh, nav bar. So let's make it 500 and now let's test this. Okay, so this is fine. At this point, I think it's good to hide the nav bar. All right, so how do we actually hide the nav bar now? So as soon as the nav bar visible signal changes, we want to animate the navbar to a specific position so how do we do that now whenever signal changes the more nat most natural way to trigger something is to use an effect so we are going to use that and let's create an effect let's remove this and let's create an effect let's call this animate nav let's create an effect this now i like to name my effect so that we know what we are doing with them and in this effect we are going to check if this dot bar visible so if the navbar is visible and then we want to use the animate function now this animate function is also coming from motion here okay so the first parameter though for the animate function is that you need to specify the html element which you want to animate so now how do we get that in angular now we could use document or get element by id but it's much better to use the angular way of doing things so we are going to use uh, the view child decorator now to use the view child decorator we want to first add a template variable linking the nav to this variable and then we are going to declare a view child here and let's call this navbar is equals to and this is going to use the new signal based view child functions and we are also going to make this required and the type is going to be element ref let's import element ref from angular core and then the specifier is navbar okay so now we can put navbar here this dot nav and since it's element reference we want to actually get the native element Okay, this is going to get the HTML element. Okay, so the second uh, part is basically the keyframes or the properties that you want to animate to. Now, it's a really nice thing about uh, motion is that in the animate function, you only need to specify the two of the animation because motion is automatically going to, you know, move the current position of the element to that two position. So this makes for really seamless um, animated experiences because you don't need to specify from if you specify your own from there might be jumps in your animation so it results in a really smooth experience all right so what we want to animate here is actually the y position of the nav bar now we can also specify any css property so we can use the transform css property here as well but there is a shorthand syntax here which motion one provides and also framer motion provides in which you can just specify the y property here all right and this can be any you know css compatible property which can be used in uh, transforms so here for example when it is visible what we want is we want zero percent here so this is going to be the position where it comes back to when it wants to be visible again okay but if it's not visible then we want it to animate to this dot nav bar and now this is going to be minus 100 percent now why minus because we want to move up not down and why 100 percent because we want to move it uh, the same amount as the height of the navbar so that it goes completely out of the view it will appear as if it's hidden great so we want to make this native element here as well and then we also want to give some animation options so the third parameter is the animation options and we are going to specify duration here as 0.2 seconds the same thing we are going to do here right okay so this should work now let's test this out and see whether this works okay let's scroll down and you can see that the navbar completely goes out of the view and when you go up 
when it reaches that scroll position and the scroll position becomes less than uh, 5 you can see that it appears back again and it goes back up it appears back up so really nice and smooth animation and we just did it in just a few lines of code okay so this is our basic navbar now you might find this enough for your needs but we want to add some other nice tidbits or interactive behavior to it okay so the second thing that we want to add is that we want to make it appear as soon as the user starts to scroll back up so even if the user is really down below and he's completed reading we want the navbar to appear itself so that the user is facilitated to actually use the navigation here and in the user does not have to go back up all the way to actually see the navigation bar so uh, how do you actually do that now the motion one scroll handler basically does not only provide the absolute position of the scroll it also provides you a parameter which is called the velocity all right so let's get the velocity here now velocity by its definition means that how fast the scroll is basically going and also an interesting part for us is that it also gives you the uh, positive and negative values so if it is going down if you're scrolling down it gives a positive velocity if it's going back up it gives back a negative velocity so we can use this value to actually find out whether the user is going up or down all right so let's get the velocity here scroll in four dot y dot velocity okay so if position is greater than 500 so this is the false part of the conditions so to do that let's turn this around a bit and let's make this less than 500 so when it is less than 500 it should show and let's also switch this and when it's less than 500 or the velocity is less than zero which means it's going up then we want the uh, nav bar to show okay so let's test this out and now when we go down you can see it hides on the specific scroll position go we go all the way down and when it tries to go back up you can see that it appears back again then you start going back up so if you go back up here and you have the scroll position it uh, keeps up visible and when you go back down again it hides as well okay so this is the behavior that we want now just one thing is that this small bobbing that we need to resolve here right so why is this happening now this is happening because the scroll event handler basically gives you back really micro movements of the scroll so it's actually detecting very small scroll movements as well and this is actually causing this jump because it sort of changes the state between visible and hidden in a very small period so what we want here is we want to add a bit of a throttling to the scroll event that we get here okay so how do we add that now a good way to do that is to basically just check the velocity so we are only going to change this visibility when the velocity is above a certain point and this means that it is going to sort of wait for a number of scroll events to happen then it's going to change it so that's going to add a bit of a buffer or a bit of a throttle before it actually changes the visibility state of the navbar so how do we do that now so let's add a check here for whether it's if it's the velocity is greater than a certain amount so this amount i'm going to keep it as 50 because it works for my use case and we're just gonna put all of this code inside of this and as you know that the velocity is also it can also be negative so what we're gonna do is we're going to use the math.abs function here which is going to get the absolute value of the velocity rather than the negative and the positive values so that we can just use one condition here all right let's save this and now you can see that when you go down and you go back up you can see that there are no jumps here because we have added a bit of throttling and it only changes it when it gets a series of events from the scroll handler all right so you can see that now it is really smooth okay so this looks really nice so one last thing that we need to add here which would be a nice touch to interactivity is that we want to make it appear on a hover as well all right so that the user even if it is hidden here the user can actually make it appear at any time okay so the first step to do that would be to not to move it completely out of view of this screen when it's hidden so let's change the y property that we animate to when it's not visible to actually minus 70 here not all the way okay and when we do it minus 70 you can see that now it hides but it sort of gets tucked away here so that there is a bit of you know this uh, it's a bit of a peak of that navbar which we can actually use to hover our mouse and to get that navbar back again so but how do we add that hovering behavior so now with framer motion it's really easy <laughs> but uh, since we don't have any sort of uh, declarative way to do it at this point although i'm working on it but since we don't have it at this point we will need to use the typical uh, event handlers that we use and handle this ourselves so first we're going to add a signal here let's call 
hover and let's make this false initially all right and then we are going to for the nav bar we are going to add some host uh, listeners here all right so now this is just one way to add host listeners we can also do it in the decorator way but uh, i prefer to do it in the host here all right so let's do mouse enter okay so on mouse enter it should actually do hover dot or let's add it as a string literal as well we're going to do hover dot set true and then for the mouse leave event it is going to do hover dot set false okay so our handlers are now set up and they're going to change our signal to true or false based on the hovering state and we're using host because we want to target this whole component the navbar component not only a few you know divs within that and the second thing now we just need to link the hover signal with our animation so how do we do that now we need to go in our animate nav here and we need to add a condition here as well so this is the visibility condition all we want to do here is we want to also add a check for this dot hover okay so either navbar is visible or the hovering is true so when the hover is true we want it to be visible all of the time no matter what the scroll position is but if it is not hovering then we want to fall back to the navbar visible which is being controlled by the scroll all right so let's try this out and let's see how this works let's save this and now when we go down you can see that it hides but when we put hover over it you can see that it comes back up again and when we hover out of it you can see that it goes back to the state where it was based on the scroll all right and this is the power of the these signals and the effects that is that are automatically getting triggered based on these state changes all right and then we go up and when we hover over this is going to not do anything because it's already true and when we go down you can try out the hover as well again you can click on this so overall a really nice behavior for your navbar it really makes it interactive for your users and makes it a bit more interesting for any site that you are designing right okay so here i'd like to give a shout out to jerion here who whose tutorial basically led to my tutorial so he actually implemented this same behavior and just these small little tricks actually he proposed these things and they uh, actually make it a really smooth animation so shout out to him and he did it for react and frame of motion but i had to adapt it to angular and motion one so that i could make it work in this sense okay all right so this completes our sticky nav bar and uh, you can see that uh, how easy it is to create these uh, animated experiences uh, using motion one and in combination with angular but you're going to notice here that i put all of this code here in the bar component code here and we couldn't put anything you know in the nav bar itself as you would do with frame of motion in react for example that means you can't add it declaratively to these classes so in the next video, I'm going to investigate just that and I'm going to actually show you a larger effort that I'm making to create Angular's own, you know, sort of frame of motion, not exactly, obviously, a wrapper on top of motion one, which is declarative. All right. So it's really interesting and watch out for that video. Now, if you want to get the code for this, as always, it's available on my BMC page, the link to which you will find in the description. And if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already so that it can reach more people uh, like you and benefit more people okay so thanks for watching i'll see you next time